Russia became fascinated with large bombers very early. In 1912, Igor Sikorsky began to build the huge Bolshoi Baltiski, the Baltic Grand, the world's first four-engined aeroplane. This is a replica of its successor, the Ilya Muromets, which was larger still. It had a wingspan of 113 feet and weighed about five tons. Almost 80 Ilya Muromets bombers were built. They served the Imperial Russian Air Service with distinction in World War I. In Soviet Russia in 1917, the new Red Air Force was neglected. The leaders of the Soviet state allowed the assets of the old Imperial Air Service to run down. In a country where the horse was still a military weapon, support for aviation was not widespread. But slowly, the value of the aeroplane was recognized. Aircraft and spare parts were salvaged. Factories were reopened. From 1917 to 1920, as the Civil War swept through Russia, the Red Army used aircraft primarily for reconnaissance. Most of the fighting took place on the ground, involving men, horses, and guns. In January 1924, Vladimir Lenin, the Soviet leader, died. No one was powerful enough to succeed him as a clear-cut leader. Joseph Stalin was a member of the Troika, a group of three men who replaced Lenin at the head of the Communist Party and the state. By this time, Soviet aviation was beginning to recover from the effects of brain drain and neglect. The Society of Friends of the Air Fleet set out to raise interest in flight and money to build planes. They aimed straight at the people of the Soviet state for support. Their slogans, workers build an air fleet and proletariat take to the air, were designed to identify industrial workers with the new air force. Their first squadron of aircraft formed in 1922 was named in memory of Lenin. In 1925, Stalin was engaged in a political struggle to gain sole leadership of the Soviet state and of the Communist Party. At the same time, young, bright Soviet designers were beginning to emerge from the new academies. The Central Aero and Hydrodynamics Institute, known as Tsagi, was established in late 1918. By the mid-twenties, it was well on its way to becoming the Soviet Union's most important center for aerodynamic research. Tsagi had an interest in big aircraft from the beginning. In 1919, its founder, Nikolai Zhukovsky, proposed the design of a large transport aircraft. A prototype was built, but was not successful. At the time, Tsagi's chief designer was Andrei Tupolev. He was influenced by the German Junkers Company's use of metal in aircraft construction. He also used Tsagi's design and test facilities to work towards the production of large, long-range aircraft for bombers or transports. Throughout the 20s and into the 30s, Tsagi's test facilities expanded. Its wind tunnels, in particular, became essential tools for a Soviet aircraft industry that was beginning to throw off the influence of foreign designers and develop an identity of its own. 
Tupolev's first really large aircraft, the AMT-4, flew in 1925. The world's first all-metal twin-engined monoplane heavy bomber. It was an extremely successful design, but for Tupolev, it was just one of a long series of extraordinary large aircraft. The ANT-9 flew in May 1929. It was a nine-passenger airliner that proved its long-range capability by flying from Moscow to London and back via Berlin in 53 flying hours. It was just one of a number of major long-distance flights by Tupolev aircraft in the 20s and 30s. The AMT-6 of 1930 was the first Soviet four-engined heavy bomber. It was also produced as a troop carrier with room for 30 fully equipped soldiers. The Soviet strategic bombing policy was based on this aircraft. With the ANT-4, it made the Soviet bomber force the largest in the world at the time. More than 800 ANT-6s were built, and it remained in service right through the 1930s. In June 1933, Andrei Tupolev's remarkable ANT-25 flew for the first time. Its wingspan was 111 feet, but the fuselage was only 44 feet long. It had fuel tanks in the wings, retractable landing gear, and only one engine. Theoretically, at least, it could stay in the air for a hundred hours. It was built on the orders of Stalin as a record-breaking aircraft, but was also thought to have potential as a long-range bomber. It never became a bomber, but it certainly broke records. In September 1934, an ANT-25 made a non-stop closed-circuit flight of almost 8,000 miles, a record that was not broken until the 1970s. In June and July 1937, ANT-25s flew non-stop from Moscow to America by way of the North Pole on two separate occasions, staying in the air for more than 60 hours on each flight. The June flight to Portland, Washington, covered 5,300 miles, and the second to San Jacinto, near Los Angeles in California, was 1,000 miles longer. In 1934 came Tupolev's most extraordinary aircraft, at least in terms of size. The project began in 1932, when the Union of Soviet Writers and Editors raised six million rubles for the construction of a giant aircraft to carry the name of the Russian writer Maxim Gorky and to create a Maxim Gorky propaganda squadron. The aircraft Tupolev designed was metal. It had a wingspan of 206 feet and was powered by eight engines of 900 horsepower each. It flew for the first time on May the 19th, 1934 and then joined the Maxim Gorky squadron for propaganda flights all over the Soviet Union, showering pamphlets, broadcasting messages and music from its loudspeakers, and even projecting images onto clouds. The Maxim Gorky was the world's largest land plane of the time. Its potential as a bomber design was not lost on the West. It could fly over a thousand miles without refueling, it was faster than many fighters. But almost exactly a year after its first flight, it crashed, brought down by an escort fighter performing unauthorized aerobatics. In spite of Soviet achievements in the design of heavy long-range aircraft in the 30s, by the time World War II broke out, there was only one long-range strategic bomber in the Soviet inventory. It was the Petyakov PE-8. The PE-8 project began under Tupolev in 1936, but was delegated to the Petyakov Bureau in 1938. Petyakov